Hello everyone! In this robotics and mechatronics tutorial I will explain how to interface a low-cost encoder or a Tacho sensor here it is with Arduino. Also I will explain how to write Arduino code for measuring the angle of rotation and angular velocity of a DC motor. But before I start with explanations I need to mention the following. First of all, the main motivation for creating this tutorial comes from the fact that I'm currently building a low-cost differential wheeled robot that can be used as a base for carrying advanced sensors such as a lighter and cameras. The goal is to develop a low-cost robotic platform capable of demonstrating and testing the performance of advanced model-based control algorithms, as well as machine learning, SLAM and navigation algorithms. Also, the robotic platform will be integrated with Robot Operating System, or ROS. To be able to track the position of this platform in space and to track its velocity, I need sensors. For that purpose, I need to install encoders on wheels. Consequently, I'm creating this tutorial in order to explain to students, as well as to engineers watching this video tutorial, how to use a simple encoder for measuring rotational angle and rotational velocity. Also, I would like to mention that it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial, as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Ok, let's start with explanations. I'm using a relatively inexpensive encoder or a Tacho sensor shown over here. Here it is. In addition, I'm mounting this wheel on the shaft of my DC motor. The system is mounted like this. Here's the encoder and wheel goes like this. As the wheel spins, the encoder will generate pulses. Here is how the system looks once we install the encoder and the wheel. And the DC motor is over here. On the other side, I attached another wheel in order to better visualize the spinning of the motor. The encoder and the wheel generate the train of pulses shown over here on the display of my oscilloscope. We can see that the pulses are quite noisy. However, we can design a simple circuit to attenuate the noise. Here is the global view of the experimental setup. The encoder and the motor are mounted by using the maker beam aluminum extrusions. Then, the DC motor is attached to the motor driver. I'm using a low-cost motor driver with the product number L298N. These connections of the motor driver should be connected to the DC motor. Over here, we connect the power supply. Here's my power supply. And finally, these three pins over here are used to control the motor and the motor driver by using Arduino. That is, these three pins are directly connected to Arduino. To control the system, I'm using Arduino Mega. This pin over here is connected to the encoder. These three pins are motor control pins. They are connected to the motor driver. And over here is my power and ground. These two wires are connected to the breadboard. Later on in this video tutorial I will provide more details about the wiring diagram of this experimental setup. In the sequel I will write Arduino code for detecting and measuring encoder pulses. These encoder pulses will be used to estimate the total angle of rotation and the angular velocity. And over here, on my Arduino serial monitor, you can see the total angle and the angular velocity as the motor is spinning. Let's do a simple experiment over here. <laughs> 
Notice the value of my angular velocity. It's around 960 degrees per second. Now, over here, I will increase the voltage. Obviously, by increasing the voltage, the motor will spin faster and consequently, the angular velocity will increase. Here it is. Over here you can observe one issue. You can observe that the pulses are quite noisy. You can see huge jumps from a base value. These jumps that are actually noise can be detected as pulses and consequently you need to design a simple circuit that will reduce this noise. Since I want to make this video tutorial as short as possible, I don't have enough time in this video to explain how to design a simple circuit that will attenuate this noise. Instead, I will use a single capacitor to minimize the effect of the noise. I will be using the capacitor of capacitance of 100 nanofarads and this capacitor should be placed between ground and the signal of our encoder. Here is where I place my capacitor, ground, and here is the signal coming from the encoder. This is what happens with the signal, that is with the pulses, once I add my capacitor. To illustrate the difference, I will remove the capacitor and let's see what happens. And then, again, here is my capacitor. And again, here is what is happening once we add the capacitor. To illustrate the difference again, I will remove the capacitor and let's see what will happen. You can see a big difference. In the sequel we present the wiring diagrams. Here is our experimental setup. Here is our encoder, our DC motor, our motor driver, breadboard and our Arduino. Here is the connection diagram of our encoder. VCC should be connected to the 5 volts of Arduino. Ground should be connected to the ground of Arduino and D0 should be connected to the pin 2 of Arduino. Here it's very important to connect D0 to either pin 2 or pin 3. This is because pin 2 and pin 3 are the interrupt pins of Arduino. If, for example, you connect D0 to pin 5, you will have an issue. You will either have to code, that is, you will have to write extensive code in order to make sure that your encoder will be working. However, if you connect it to pin 2, Pin 2 is automatically the interrupt pin and you will be fine. Here is the wiring diagram of our motor driver. From this side we connect our DC motor. These three pins ENA, IN1 and IN2 are the control pins and they should be connected to the pin 6, 5 and 4 of Arduino. Over here we need to attach our power supply. Power supply voltage goes here and this port should be grounded. And the ground should be a common ground with Arduino. And that's it. To make this video tutorial as clear as possible, first I will explain Arduino code for reading information from our encoder. That is, we will just read the pulses from our encoder. Later on I will explain more complex code that will be used to estimate the angular velocity and total rotational angle. First, we need to define the encoder pin. In my case, my encoder is attached to the pin number 2. Here I need to stress one very important fact. The pins 2 and 3 are the interrupt pins. Consequently, you need to connect the encoder to the pin 2 or 3. Next, this variable called total pulses is used to measure the total number of pulses and we will increment this variable every time we detect a pulse. Okay, 
Over here in the setup function, we set the encoder pin, we set it as an input, and this function is really important. The function attach interrupt has three input arguments. The first input argument is used to connect our encoder pin to the actual interrupt. The second input argument is the name of the function that will be called once the pulse is being detected. In my case, the name of the function is the interrupt function, and I define this function over here. The third input argument, called rising, tells to Arduino that we want to detect the rising edge of our pulse. And finally, we initialize our serial port and our serial communication. We are using the serial port since we want to use the serial monitor. We will be using the serial monitor to plot the pulses detected by the encoder. Then, surprisingly or not, our main loop is empty. This is because the main work will be done by interrupt function. Let's explain this function. This function is really simple. Once the pulse is detected, this function will be called. Then, what do we do over here? We simply increment this variable that counts the total number of pulses. And we print the total number of pulses. And that's it. Here, it's very important to emphasize that the interrupts as well as the interrupt functions are executed independently from the main code. That is, they have priority over the code placed over here. So what's happening? Let's say you write something over here and then the pulse is being detected. The piece of code that's being written over here will not be executed. Instead, this interrupt function will be called. And note one more thing over here. We are never explicitly calling the interrupt function from our main loop. Once the pulse is detected, this function will be automatically called. And that's ensured by this function, because in this function, we attached the interrupt to the encoder pin, and we said, once the pulse is detected, and we are looking into the rising edge, call this function. Let's upload the code, and let's test the code. Here it is. Over here, open the serial monitor. Here it is. Hmm, nothing is happening over here. And that's expected since we are not moving the wheel. Let us move the wheel on this side and let us pin the motor shaft. And observe here the result. Uh huh. You can see that something is changing, right? As I'm spinning the motor shaft, the pulses are being detected. Perfect. Next, let's explain the code for measuring the rotational angle and the rotational velocity. This part of the code is the same as the previous code. Our encoder is on the pin number 2. The pins 6, 5 and 4 are the motor pins. Since I want to make this video tutorial as short as possible, I will not explain how to control the motor. I explained this in my previous tutorial. Its link is given in the description below this video tutorial. This variable over here, called angle per pulse, quantifies the angle of rotation per pulse. Since we have 20 holes on our encoder wheel, the angle per pulse is 360 degrees divided by 20, and this gives 18 degrees per pulse. The variable called total pulses will store the total number of pulses from the start of the Arduino program. Then, this variable called total angle will store the total angle calculated from total pulses. Then, we have three variables used to measure the time. In order to be able to calculate the angular velocity, we need to track the current time and the last time. And once we determine, or better to say, once we measure the current time and the last time, we can compute the time increment delta t.
as follows. Then let's explain the variables for storing and calculating the angular velocity. The variable called angular velocity is used to store an average angular velocity. This average angular velocity is calculated by measuring 50 pulses and by measuring the time between these 50 pulses and by integrating that time. And then if we know the pulses and if we know this variable angle per pulse, we can calculate the total rotational angle and we can divide the result by the total time that's being passed during these 50 pulses. And that's the trick for calculating the angular velocity. Here's our setup function. Over here we set the motor pins. Over here we set the encoder pin. And over here we call the function attach interrupt. This function has the same form as the function explained in our previous code. Over here we initialize the serial communication in the serial port and we simply measure the last time. We use the function called millis to measure the time. This function will return time from the beginning of our Arduino program and the time will be expressed in milliseconds. Here's our loop function. In the loop function we first set the motor speed and over here we set the spinning direction of our motor. And that's it. Next, let's explain our interrupt function. This function is called every time the pulse is being detected. And it should be kept in mind that this function has a priority over the code shown over here. Once the pulse is detected, we go inside of this function. We measure the current time. Then we calculate delta t and delta t is the time increment between the current pulse and the previous pulse. The last time is the time of the previous pulse. And over here we set the last time to be equal to the current time. Then we increment the total number of pulses and we calculate the total rotational angle. We simply multiply the variable called angle per pulse by the total number of pulses and we obtain the total rotational angle. These two variables are used to calculate the average velocity. What's happening over here? Initially, this variable called sum pulses is equal to zero. And once the pulse is detected, we increment this variable. Next pulse, again we increment. Over here, we use this variable to store the total time between the pulses. That is, we integrate the time between the pulses. Once this variable sum pulses becomes larger than or equal to the average sample, and the average sample in our case is 50, that is, once this variable becomes 50, we step in. And over here, we simply calculate the average velocity, we take sum pulses, we multiply angle per pulse to obtain the total rotational angle during these 50 pulses and we divide the result by the time of these 50 pulses. And finally we print the result and we reset the variable sum of pulses and we reset the variable time average angular velocity is equal to zero. Perfect.